Good afternoon, one and all. Myself, Dr. Ajit Parwani. I am Assistant Professor, IIT Ram, in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. And today I will discuss uh, my research topic, Hybrid Method for Inverse Heat Transfer Problem. Uh, first of all, let me explain what is the Inverse Heat Transfer Problems. In the Inverse Heat Transfer Problems, we are estimating the boundary conditions, uh, the thermal properties, and uh, the surface temperature or the inlet condition with the help of some temperature data inside the domain. Now, let me explain what is the hybrid method. Now, there are various methods to solve the inverse heat transfer problems, and hybrid method are basically the combination of two or more methods. So, because each and every method has its own advantage and disadvantage, so in order to utilize the best of the methods, we, we will combine the two or more methods so we call it habit method right this is the outline of my presentation first of all i introduce uh, in, with introduction inverse heat transfer concept objective function solution technique and then i will discuss the literature and then make the summary of the literature then i will explain the objectives so far i have i have uh, completed then i will discuss the case studies then i will explain the experimental setup which i fabricated at iit delhi then i will explain the model development there are three models i have used for solution of inverse heat transfer problem the conjugate gradient method habit differential evolution and the uh, differential evolution method. So the formulation of these methods I will discuss in this uh, topic, model development, then come to results and followed by a conclusion. First of all, introduction. The inverse techniques are used uh, when the direct measurements of uh, the boundary condition, the inlet condition are difficult. So we will use the inverse methods to retrieve these parameters. Inverse heat transfer problems are ill post problems. Ill post problem means the solution may not be unique or it may change with slight variation uh, in the input variable. Okay, therefore this type of problems are solved as an op with an optimization, with, by use of optimization techniques. Uh, now I will discuss the application of inverse heat transfer problems. In space research, uh, these techniques are used very extensively. In the space, when the space vehicle re-enters re into the earth atmosphere, the heat flux is too high in order, therefore we cannot directly measure the heat flux or the temperature of the thermal shield but with the use of these techniques inverse techniques we can uh, estimate the what uh, the heat flux and the uh, or the temperature or the thermal properties of the thermal shield of the space vehicle the another application of inverse heat transfer problem is uh, in in uh, heat transfer process or in another in, in any other application where the surface is directly subjected to fire so the heat flux uh, determination of heat flux by direct measurement is uh, rather difficult but by using the inverse technique uh, we can easily uh, estimate the what what the heat flux on the surface of the material there are some more applications of the inverse heat transfer problems like we can estimate the uh, uh, thermophysical properties of the material we can estimate the uh, radiation properties in absorbing emitting and scattering uh, semi transparent materials we can estimate the inlet condition and boundary condition in forced convection inside the ducts we can also monitor the radiation properties of the reflecting surface of heaters and cryogenic panels we can control and optimization of the curing process of the rubber and we can also estimate the time wise varying unknown interface conductance between metal, metal solidification and metal mold during casting there are many more applications uh, beside these now let me explain what is the inverse heat transfer problem concept now in order to explain the inverse heat transfer problem concept let me explain first what is the direct heat transfer problem in a direct heat transfer problem you may you may know that we have the boundary conditions we know the uh, the flux value at the boundary we know the temperature value at the boundary and we know the property of the material and with the help of these parameters uh, we able to determine the temperature profile inside the domain this is the direct heat transfer problem but in the inverse heat transfer problem as i already uh, mentioned that here the boundary conditions are unknown and these boundary conditions uh, we are estimating with the help of some temperature data in which are which which are taken by by mounting some uh, some sensors inside the domain okay therefore in the direct heat transfer problem the cause that is the boundary condition the heat flux the temperature is known to us and we are determining the effect that is the temperature field inside the body while in the inverse heat transfer problem it is the inverse that is here the effect is known and we are determining the cause now to further explain the concept let us look this diagram you see it is a uh, you see the two plates the bottom plate is insulated and the top plate is uh, applied with the with some heat flux okay and uh, we and it's, it's a convection problem and where the fully dual flow is considered right okay it is something like a rectangular duct where the where the effect of the side walls are neglected the width of the 
uh, duct is quite large therefore we can neglect the effect of the side walls so it's, it's just like a two parallel plates the bottom plate is insulated and the top plate is subjected with some heat flux okay now uh, applying the heat transfer uh, concept the governing equation these are this is the governing equation for for this type of flow you see uh, del square theta by del y square by theta is the dimensionless temperature this governing equation is a dimensionless form okay and theta is the temperature temp a temperature inside the domain del square theta by del y square uh, i have neglected the uh, conduction in the x direction therefore i have, i did not uh, return here the uh, del square theta by del x square okay so the equation is del square theta by del y square is equal to del theta by delta del tau plus u del theta by del x okay so this is a force convection problem now at y is equal to 0 this is the y direction this is the x direction so at y is equal to 0, del theta by del y is equal to 0, that is the plate is insulated, okay, that is there is no heat flux at this boundary, okay, at y is equal to 0, the plate is insulated. Now at y is equal to b, at y is equal to b, at y is equal to b, the, uh, there is a heat flux of q tau, right, and at the inlet condition, the temperature is prescribed and it is given as theta, theta is equal to theta n, and at the initial time, uh, the temperature is 0, right, so in order to solve this problem, if if we know the value of q tau, if we know the value of theta n, if you know if you if we know the value of q tau, if you will if you know, if you know the value of theta n, we can solve this problem and we can get the value of theta inside the domain. Right? This is a heat transfer problem. This is a direct heat transfer problem. If we know these boundary condition, we can solve these equations. We can solve these equation by applying any method, finite volume method, finite difference method. We can apply any method and we can solve uh, the value of theta inside the domain. Right, this is a direct problem. But suppose if this q tau or theta n or both is unknown, okay, if these two are unknown, then we can't solve the problem. We can't able to solve the problem if these two are unknown. So these values can be determined by the help of inverse techniques, by using inverse technique. How can we determine, how can we use inverse technique? We place the sensors like this, you see. We place, we place the sensors inside the domain okay and take the readings take the temperature readings with the help of these sensors okay now with that with these temperature readings then we apply the optimization technique the optimization technique uh, optimized optimization technique must contain some objective function okay the objective function is, no, is nothing but the difference between the two temp square of the two temperatures one is the measured temperature that is the measured temperature value at the sensor position and other one is the calculated temperature the calculated temperature by the optimization technique you may know, you might know that we have some solution we some we have some initial solution and with the help of this initial solution we can calculate the value of temperature at the sensor position by applying the direct problem okay so if the initial solution is good then this objective function will vanish so our object our ob, our objective is the is to vanish this function okay that is to minimize this we have to minimize the objective function so in order to solve the this problem okay so in order to get the heat flux this is the objective function where these two where we want to minimize this objective function by applying some optimization technique right now what are the optimization techniques we know that the optimization methods are divided into two categories one is deterministic method and another one is the stochastic method in the deterministic method we are using the gradient information in order to optimize the in order, in order to optimize the objective function right in a stochastic method which is a probabil probabilistic method and here we generate the many solutions and with these solutions uh, we then we then apply some operators uh, into this uh, into these methods and then we approach the uh, solution. So in deterministic method, the conjugate gradient method is the most popular method for inverse heat transfer problems. Okay, and I'm, I have used this, this method, conjugate gradient method. And among the stochastic method, I have used differential evolution algorithm. I have mentioned hybrid method also. Hybrid method, because see, each method has its own advantage and disadvantage. The conjugate gradient method, which is a deterministic method, is a very fast method. You get the solution, you get the optimization in very short time as compared to the stochastic methods. But the conjugate gradient method is the problem. It is a globe, it's, it's a local minimization method. That is, that is, it may not give the true value. The stochastic method has the, has the advantage that it can give the, it is the global optimization method. This is the advantage of differential evolution method. But at the same time, it is computationally expensive method. That is a very slow method. So in order to utilize the advantages of these two methods, we can combine the two or more methods and we call it hybrid method. Okay, 
I will come to, come to the formulation later on. So now let, let me discuss the literature of this inverse heat transfer problem. First of all, literatures of the conduction problems. Now in the conduction problem, the researchers, uh, researchers have estimated the uh, boundary heat flux, the temperature, the material properties by applying conjugate gauge. CGM is the conjugate gauge method and GA is the genetic algorithm method. method. So researchers have applied different methods to solve uh, inverse heat conduction problems right you see in inverse heat convection problem most of the methods are conjugate gauge method so conjugate gauge methods are used extensively for inverse heat, heat transfer problems and here in inverse heat conduction convection problem the boundary heat flux the inlet temperature the the properties thermal properties are estimated in radiation problems the radiation properties, the heat flux are estimated by the use of conjugate gradient method and the genetic algorithm method. So now let's come to summary of the literature. As, as, as seen in the literature, there are there are various, uh, various uh, researchers have applied the conjugate gradient method to solve the inverse heat transfer problems. As I said, the conjugate gradient method is a computationally faster method because it uses the gradient information to optimize therefore it is it is faster but it may converge to the local minima okay because conjugate gradient method starts with a single solution okay with a single solution we we use the gradient information and then we and then we move ahead well in the case of a stochastic method we use many solutions we start with many solutions therefore it is it is quite more uh, have, a, have a more probability that stochastic method will end up in a global optimization in the literature, hydrodynamically developing flow is not considered so far. However, I have I have one publication. Also, the simultaneous simultaneous estimation of location and strength of heat source in a participating medium is also not addressed in the literature. I solved this type of this issue, and I have one publication also on this issue. Experimental work on inverse turbulent post convection is also not carried out in the inverse heat transfer problem. So. I have one publication with this issue and differential evolution algorithm is also not used extensively in the literatures. I have two or three publications on the differential evolution algorithm for the solution of inverse heat transfer problems. So the objectives uh, so far the, uh, are the, the development of a numerical model for the estimation of unknown boundary inlet condition for inverse heat convection problem and then application of the conjugate gradient method and the differential evolution algorithm method for these type of problems. Then applying conjugate gradient method and differential evolution method and comparing these two methods. And then uh, simultaneously estimation of the strength and the uh, location of the heat source in a participating media with, by the application of differential evolution algorithm. And finally, uh, validation of the simulation with the experiments. These are the case studies considered so far. The first one is the inverse heat conduction. Each case study, I have a publication on each with each case study, and the publication is is highlighted uh, below. This is the case of the conduction. This is the uh, domain uh, material uh, material domain, and here uh, I have estimate I am estimating this heat flux. Okay, the heat flux is varying with space as well as with time. Okay, so in order to estimate the heat flux, I uh, I use these sensors, the data of these sensors to estimate this heat flux. This is another case study. Uh, it's a convection problem, forced convection problem with a fully developed flow condition and I am estimating the inlet temperature. Okay, inlet temperature of the flow, right? And the sensors are uh, mounted transversely, transverse to the flow direction. In this, in this case study, heat flux is estimated with the help of sensors which are mounted actually in the along the flow direction in a hydrodyn hydrodynamically developed laminar flow condition and thermally, thermally developing flow. Now here hydrodynamically and thermally developing flow is considered uh, in order to estimate the inlet temperature okay with the help of these sensors. Here heat flux is estimated heat flux is estimated with the help of sensors in a hydrodynamically and thermally developing laminar flow. Then differential evolution algorithm is applied in hydrodynamically developing flow as well as developed laminar flow condition. Then hybrid algorithm is developed. Now here the strength of the source is estimated with the, uh, in, a, uh, in a participating media. Here uh, the, not only the strength of the uh, source but also the location, its location is estimated simultaneously. See if suppose if we have a, uh, some space okay and 
uh, there is some heat generation in that space right and we don't know where where is the heat generation where the heat generation is actually situated okay so with the with the application of this model okay not only the source strength but also the exact position of the source strength we can estimate so uh, it is published in jqsrt uh, journal this is another case study uh, in which it's a three dimensional problem a rectangular box containing the participating media the heat flux is estimated with the help of measured temperature uh, the sensors are mounted on the bottom bottom surface and with the help of these sensors reading we estimate the heat flux now uh, this experiment uh, is uh, experiment are performed in a, at iit delhi here a fully developed turbulent forced convection problem is considered it consists of a, a wind tunnel it's a wind tunnel having uh, this duct a rectangular duct okay and uh, the test section is far far from the inlet section because i am i have considered only the developed flow condition therefore the test section i have placed the test section little far far, far from the inlet section okay it it is approximately 2 meter far from the inlet section okay so with the help of these temperature sensors the rtds i am estimating the heat flux which is at the top of the uh, top of this plate okay this is the photograph of the experimental setup you see this is a test section which is a uh, little far from the inlet this is the inlet section and the test section is 2 uh, meters far from the inlet section therefore the conditions here is the dolar flow condition okay so with the help of the temperature sensors uh, I, i have estimated the heat flux at the top section at the top of the plate now i have used the three methods one is the conjugate gary method the other one is the uh, uh, differential evolution algorithm and the third one is the habit method habit method is the combination of the conjugate gradient and the differential evolution algorithm okay so i will discuss the uh, formulation of all these three methods one by one first of all let me take conjugate gradient method okay in the conjugate gradient method as i said that it is a deterministic method it uses the gradient information in order to solve the uh, optimization problems okay uh, so it it consists of two parameters one is the 